Good evening, everybody, and welcome to East Gippsland Shire Council's meeting of the 15th of December, 2020. East Gippsland Shire Council live streams, records, and publishes its meetings via webcasting to enhance the accessibility of its meetings to the broader East Gippsland community. These recordings are also archived and available for viewing by the public or used for publicity or information purposes. At the appropriate times during the meeting, any members of the gallery who are addressing the council will have their image, comments or submissions recorded. No other person has the right to record council meetings unless approval has been granted by the chair. The Victorian government was amended has amended the COVID-19 omnibus emergency me measures and other act amendment act 2020 that enables council meetings to be conducted by electronic means video conferencing until the 26th of April 2021. The Minister for Local Government reissued the ministerial good practice guideline for virtual meetings on the 20th of October 2020 outlining the provisions relating to the Local Government Act 2020 allow councillors to attend council meetings electronically and the requirement where council meetings are open to the public will be satisfied where the meeting is live streamed. The amendments do not preclude councillors from attending a meeting in person in the council chambers. Members of the public are invited to view the council meeting live streamed by following the link on council's website or Facebook page. East Gippsland Shire Council acknowledges the Gunai Kurnai, Monero and Bidwell people as the traditional custodians of the land that encompasses East Gippsland Shire. We pay our respects to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people living in East Gippsland, their elders past and present. Mr CEO, do we have any apologies please? Mayor, I have one apology from Councillor Van Diggle. Thank you. Um, item 1.3 on the agenda is declaration of conflict of interest. Uh, I note that Councillor John White has declared a conflict of interest in item 5.2.1, Con 2020-1385, fire slashing and roadside pest weed management as a material interest due to being a tenderer of the contract. There are no other declarations of conflict of interest that I can see. No. Item 1.4 is the confirmation of the minutes. Councillors. Thank you, Councillor Reeves. Do I have a seconder? Oh, thank you, Councillor Grayson. Um, do you wish to speak to the motion, Councillor Reeves? No. Do you wish to speak to the motion, Councillor Greeson? If not, is the motion opposed? If not, I put the motion to the vote. All those in favour? The motion is carried unanimously. Uh, item 1.5, the next meeting. The next meeting of uh, of Council will be on Tuesday the 2nd of February 2021 to be held at the Corporate Centre 273 Main Street, Bensdale, commencing at 6pm. Item 1.6 is requests for leave of absence. Are there any requests, Mr CEO? There are none, Mayor. Thank you. Item 1.7, request to speak about your community project. Do we have any requests? We have no requests, Mayor. Item 1.8 is public question time. There are no public questions tonight, Mayor. Thank you. Item 1.9, petitions. None have been received, Mayor. Thank you. Item 2 is notices of motion and or rescission, and I don't think we have any. No, item number 3 is deferred business, and we have none. And item, moving on to item uh, four is councillor and delegate reports. Councillors, do you have any reports this evening, please? Councillor Crook, thank you. Thanks, Madam Mayor. I'd just like to report back from the uh, Disability Advisory Committee meeting. Uh, we, we had our first meeting uh, this, this week and uh, 
and for the year and, and my first meeting with this committee um, as a councillor. And I have the following general comments or points of interest to raise uh, by means of this short report back. Uh, firstly, I'd like to thank everybody for my appointment to this committee. It seems clear that the, the DAC, as it's known, <coughs> has an active and passionate membership base that are both diverse and knowledgeable, and I'm glad to be a part of it. However, a general feeling from within the DAC became quite quickly apparent um, that the needs of our constituents, as represented by the DAC, are not currently being met to the extent that is expected. With this most recently evident in the construction of community infrastructure in relation to accessibility, which caters for a variety of abilities. A spe specific example of the new lookout at Jemmy's Point in Kalimna was discussed at length, with mention also that developments undertaken as part of the bushfire recovery efforts at Malakuta also require redress. There is also concern within the group regarding the establishment of the bushfire recovery community, uh, bushfire recovery community representative committees and specifically the selection process. So to ensure that they are genuinely representative of the demographic, socioeconomic and geographic diversity of the areas affected. I'll just, the, the committee's chosen to write to the Shire on the Jemmy's Point issue uh, specifically, and I'll just quote briefly from that letter which I've received this evening. It is a constant battle for people with disabilities and those in the communities who need greater access to all spaces. We try very hard to work collaboratively and strategically only to find our efforts either a second thought or simply too hard to achieve. So I was somewhat uh, disappointed, I guess, it's fair to say, fellow councillors. Um, there's obviously a lot, of, um, a lot of room for improvement in this space. And I think given the dedication of, of the other members on that committee, I look forward to trying to meet that challenge into the future and working with staff and, uh, and this council to do so. Mm. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Crook. Are there other councillor reports, please? Councillor Reeves, thank you. Thanks, Mayor. Thanks, councillors. Um, councillors, I just want to report on uh, two events that I attended of a number that have occurred, and I'll submit the, um, my report for the record. But they were on the 11th and 12th of December at uh, Orbost and Goongarra, respectively, Gather Around the Grill community um, bushfire recovery events. And to paraf paraphrase what I've written, um, at Orbost, about 200 meals were served. So that gives an indication of the number of people who were attended. Um, CFA organised these events, and they're, they're really critical, as we know, I think, in terms of bushfire recovery, joining people up and re-establishing those community connections. Uh, the various recovery agencies and response agencies were represented at Orbost, and it was, it was a great day. Music and food and, um, as I said, agencies, police, CFA, forest fire management and the like were all there. Uh, at Goongar on the Sunday, there were about 20, 20 or 25 community members um, joined the barbecue. And one of the things that was really telling about that particular event, councillors, is that uh, for many people there was a recognition that this was the first time since the fire events that many people had actually joined up, that since the fires, because of COVID, there hadn't been an opportunity for people to actually gather together as a collective, as a, as a community. And as we've heard today, uh, councillors, from Anne Leadbeater, the importance of joining up communities, community connections, that social fabric. So just uh, if you do get those opportunities, and I know other councillors attended uh, Gather Around the Grill at Johnsonville last weekend as well. And, uh, and just, I think, the, the importance of those events can't be underestimated. So thanks for the opportunity to share that. Thank you, Councillor Reeves. Councillor Allen. Uh, thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> on uh, Friday morning, I attended the launch of a calendar, um, basically uh, driven by Sally Jones, or Bowen, as she's better known around Lakes Entrance, where she grew up. Uh, and it's a, a calendar aimed, aimed at the dairy industry uh, to raise awareness of mental health. Uh, it was a, a very good turnout to the event and it was uh, very moving that nine of the pinups uh, stood up and spoke of their 
battles with mental health over different issues, isolation of being on the farm, the stresses of financial hardship uh, and other stresses. And, and uh, I think that Sally and Gippsland com uh, complete, Gippsland Lakes Complete Health, who uh, was also in involved in the production of the calendar, need to be commended for that. It was really a special day. And then uh, Friday afternoon, along with Councillor Reeves, I attended at Waiwira, accompanied by uh, Stuart McConnell, Lane Bath and Peter Palmer, uh, to hear the Waiwira's community's concerns about their uh, rubbish disposal. And uh, I think it was a, a very, very uh, productive afternoon. It gave the community the opportunity to put forward their views. Uh, they were very emotional, but they were very, very respectful. And, and it was a great afternoon meeting. And I thank Stuart and Wayne uh, for their input in particular. And I also thank Ca Councillor Reeves for attending as well, because it gave a lot more oomph to the afternoon that, that Council was so well represented. And as Councillor Reeves uh, said before about the gather around the grill I attended at Johnsonville on Saturday, and it was a great community day. Thank you. Mm. Thanks, Councillor Allen. Are there any other councillor reports? Councillor Buckley, thank you. Uh, I was uh, privileged to go to the Cattlemen 100 event up in Omeo. Uh, we're, we're so excited about being one of the best destinations in the country to go and, uh, and ride mountain bikes, etc. And this, this event was uh, extremely well attended considering it was one of the first bigger events after COVID. And we were very proud to say that we offer one of the best rides, but one of the toughest in Australia. And, uh, and that was felt by all the people who participated. I was very proud of them. And, uh, and we're looking forward to um, the Deputy Mayor in uh, opening up our new pump track next, next Saturday. So exciting things to be had by all. So I encourage all of the councillors and people of, uh, of East Gippsland to go and buy a mountain bike. <laughs> Thanks, Councillor Buckley. Councillor White, please. Thank you, Mayor. Just to, uh, I'd like to report on uh, Wednesday evening's um, a planning mediation meeting, which I chaired. Um, it was uh, it was one with uh, where we had representatives of the uh, the applicant, and also we had uh, community members who had lodged um, um, appeals against this uh, proposed subdivision on Comleys Lane. Um, the meeting began with both sides being poles apart and <clears throat> just minutes in it looked like we were going to go nowhere but a little bit of prying and, and probing and teasing and the conversations got going and astoundingly at the end we'd reached a resolution where they will get back together again and have moved towards the middle and uh, you know that's because these meetings are not very frequent, that was, uh, I think it's a great outcome that we might get a, uh, a positive resolution to this where both parties may be satisfied and uh, hoping uh, they'll come back to planning with a, with a new proposal and hopefully that suits everybody and uh, we'll get a good outcome. But uh, it was a great meeting, thank you. Thank you, Councillor White. Any further councillor reports? I've got... Um a few things that I'd like to mention. So for me, since the last uh, council meet, ordinary council meeting, which was two weeks ago, um, I've attended quite a lot of engagements. Um, some of them are training engagements, which is continuing for new councillors. Uh, there have been a number of those. Highlights have probably been the community engagements, uh, and there have been a number of those. The viewing and placing of the time capsule in the cenotaph. Um, the East Gippsland Marketing end of, end of Year Celebrations, the Orbos Community Barbecue, um, of which some of the councillors have mentioned already, um, meeting with the HOPE, members of the HOPE community of, uh, Committee of Management. And that was around the occasion of a, a new book launch, which tells of the story of how they got that 
um, really wonderful project up and running in the community. So there is a copy of the book down in the councillor's room and I'd, I haven't read it myself yet, but I recommend it and pass it around. Um, opening of art exhibitions at East Gippsland Art Gallery, that was a happy, happy occasion. Um, Raymond Island Community Celebration on the 13th of December, another one of those uh, occasions where the community gets together and sort of reflects a little bit on the year that's uh, been, I think, and looks forward a little bit to the future. So really uh, nice community event to be part of. And yesterday, the Painesville BTA Business and Tourism Association, AGM. So that's been quite busy, but also a number of um, uh, attendances outside the, the Shire, and these are mostly to do with the role of mayor. So the CEO and I met with the uh, local government minister, minister, the Honourable Sean Lean, on the 2nd of December. Uh, we had a virtual meeting with him. We had a one Gippsland meeting, so with all the Gippsland councils uh, getting together. That was also virtual. Um, that included a mayoral, a mayoral induction for the new mayors as well. So that's, um, that's a great group and there's something important to look out for from, there, from that group, which is the Gippsland Regional Plan, which has been completed and soon to be launched. Uh, and finally, uh, the Canberra Region Joint Organisation Board Meeting which is an interesting group of, uh, of councillors and again gives a different perspective from outside our, sh our shire, I think, and the CEO and myself uh, participated in that and came away with some um, really good and interesting ideas which might be applicable to East Gippsland, I think, in the future. So it's been a busy, a busy fortnight. Good. Um, so we'll just move on to... Um, Officer reports, item five on the agenda. And item 5.1, strong communities, is the adoption of amen amendment C151 EGIP to the East Gippsland Planning Scheme Corrections Amendment. And I'll hand over to Ms Pitkin, please. Thank you, Mayor. Councillors, before you is a report titled Adoption of Amendment C151 EGIP to the East Gippsland Planning Scheme Corrections Amendment which is seeking that Council adopt Planning Scheme Amendment C151 EGIP without changes. The salient points of the report for Council to consider are the amendment is a corrections amendment that updates the planning scheme, fixing identified errors and anomalies. The amendment affects 29 properties across the municipality and has been subject to public notice with no objections received. Amendments such as these are undertaken as a matter of course to ensure that the planning scheme is regularly updated and that any errors and anomalies are corrected. Also present this evening is Nicole Reynolds, Acting Manager Planning, who will be happy to answer any technical questions you might have. The report is presented for your consideration. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Ms Pitkin. And of course, um, councillors have had an opportunity to look at this in some detail and ask some questions already, but I would just ask councillors if you have any further questions. Councillor Greeson. Um, I would like to ask um, Ms Pitkin whether the um, changes are going to, might have any impact on the use of the reserve, and I'm particularly referring to Hewitt Reserve, Hewitt Park Reserve. Sorry, Hewitt Park Recreation Reserve. Thank you. Howard. <laughs> Apologies. Thank you, Councillor Greeson, for your question. Uh, in relation to Howitt Park, the change afoot is to convert a section of the existing reserve that is zoned general residential to a proposed public uh, purposes recreation zone to a public zone. It does not impact the current Indigenous Land Use Agreement that is on, on the title. It does not impact adversely the current Crown land or public use of the land, and it will, it will enable uh, to con the continuation of public use of the land. Good. Are there any further questions, councillors? If not, uh, there is a recommendation, an officer recommendation in front of you. Do I have a motion? Sure. Thank you, Councillor Reeves. Happy to move it. 
you'd like to move the motion. Do I have a seconder? Thank you, Councillor Allen. Councillor Rees, do you wish to speak to the motion? Oh, very briefly. These matters come up from time to time and it's very procedural and um, transactional, so I'm happy to move it through. Thank you. Councillor Allen, do you wish to speak to the motion? No, only just to endorse what Mark said. It's just a procedural thing. Thank you. Is the motion opposed? Or does anybody else wish to speak to the motion? If not, I put the motion to the vote. All those in favour? Thank you. The motion is carried unanimously. Um, item 5.2 on the agenda is um, a livable region. So this is a, a contract and it's numbered CON 2020-1385, fire slashing and roadside pest weed management. Councillor White. Yes, uh, Madam Mayor, I'd just like to uh, now declare my conflict of interest and leave the meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor White. Thank you. I would like to hand over to Ms Weagle, please. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> As councillors are aware, the management of um, roadside pests is a very important part of our business, as is the fire slashing of our roadsides in preparation for um, fire preparedness for the summers every year. Given the um, extent of our road network, these are um, activities that we seek contractors to undertake on our behalf. Therefore, we have recently gone out to tender for the contract you have before you, which is what we call a panel contract and a schedule of rates contract. So it, would, it is for a 2.5 year period and it has the ability to be extended for two further 12 month terms. Um, the, the, the report actually also has a confidential attachment which goes through the detail of how the tenders were evaluated and, the, and gives you the details of all the tenders. As you will see from the report in front of you, we actually have broken the, um, the area that we tendered for into four discrete areas, recognising the importance of undertaking all of this work at the same time. And we're actually recommending that we, um, multiple tenderers are added to our panel so that we can undertake this work in a timely fashion. Um, I also have the manager of works, Mark Burnett, online if we need him for any technical questions but I'm happy to take any um, questions, answer any questions or refer them to Mark. And we have a quite extensive recommendation and my apologies that it is so extensive um, before you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Weagle. Councillors, are there any questions? Thank you, Councillor Buckley. Uh, just uh, the question, Mark, in regards to with the new strategy in place, all the, the new uh, sections in regards to uh, how the operation works. Um, my question is, will this improve uh, the slashing and response time uh, to some of the issues that we've, we've uh, been experiencing <clears throat> over time? And, um, if so, how, how will that expedite the process? Do you see that this will be, have lots of positive ramifications, which seems to be evident in the report? Mark there. Hmm. Mark, I'm wondering if you can hear us. I think we might actually have a technical issue. <laughs> oh, <laughs> he's there's, got off the hook. <laughs> there's a little bit of a, um, I think they're muted. Okay, so I'm happy to take that one. Okay, um, thank you. We've recently moved the contract across from emergency management to um, be managed by our road supervisors because these people are out and about inspecting our roads on a really regular basis and we are, we'll be able to schedule that work and make sure that the contractors are, are um, addressing the work as required and in the time frames required. So I think that um, it, giving it, the contract across to this area means that we've got four road management supervisors that'll be out there looking at these roads and making sure the work is being done in a really timely fashion. So I believe the answer there for council is yes. We anticipate a little bit of an improvement. Obviously this year has been a very wet year with lots of rain comes lots of grass. So there's also been um, a lot for the contractors to get through given the, the growing season that we've had. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. Ms. Wiggle, if I could also ask, so this um, a, a panel of providers, having a panel of providers providing this service is not a new thing for council? No, um, this is the way that we've run this contract for a while. We find because we have, we undertake two, um, two slashes in that build up to summer. So we really need a range of contractors available to us so that we can send them out to different areas and make sure that all that work is being undertaken concurrently. So by having it as a um, panel of contracts and as a, a schedule of rates contracts over multiple years, it provides those, um, those contractors with certainty so they can have the right equipment and it also provides council with certainty because we know what the rates will be from year to year. So it's very much a win-win for everyone and it also means that we can ensure that we're engaging local contractors in local areas to undertake the work. Thank you. Thank you. Could you also comment, and uh, obviously we can't comment on anything that's uh, confidential, but I'm just wondering about um, how many people applied for this contract. Would, was it a good uh, take up of local providers? It was a very good take up of local providers and mm. um, we're pleased that most of them have actually been recommended to, to the panel. So there were very few that were not recommended to the panel. So it's a really great outcome. It's great to see. We understand that these sort of um, contracts take a bit of time to prepare. It's great to see our local contractors doing that and being rewarded with um, the recommendation before you to become contractors on our panel. Thank you, Ms. Weagle. If there are no further questions, councillors, there is a recommendation in front of you. Do I have a motion? Councillor Buckley, you'd like to move the motion? Madam Mayor, I move the motion. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Stowe, thank you. I think we're um, going to have the recommendation displayed here. It's quite long. <laughs> no, I, I was aware that I had, didn't have to. <laughs> so we do have um, a, a motion which has been moved and seconded. Um, Councillor Buckley, do you wish to speak to the motion? Only to thank the, uh, the um, officers for putting in the work and for all of the local contractors who have done the same. And it's with the best of, um, well, hope that the, the, uh, the good work will keep our communities safer in this, these fire seasons fire seasons. I think that's uh, the most important comment I can make. Thank you, Councillor Buckley. Do you wish to speak to the motion, Councillor Stone? Just that the process we seem to go through is uh, transparent and good. Uh, local contractors get a little bit of assistance also, and I think it's great, and I'd be very pleased to second it. Thank you. Does anyone wish to speak against the motion? No. Does anyone else wish to speak for or against? Councillor Reeves. Oh, thanks, Mayor. Councillors, we've got something like 3,500 kilometres of roads that we manage in our shire, so if this looks like an extensive list of people with lawnmowers racing up and down, there's a good reason. And there's a community expectation that our roads, roads are managed and kept safe and fire managed. So uh, it, it is a, a lot of people and a lot of work um, to look after the extensive road network we have. Thank you. Does anyone else wish to speak? If not, I put the motion to the vote. All those in favour? Thank you, the motion is carried unanimously. We'll just pause for a moment while Councillor White returns to the room. Welcome back, Councillor White. Item 5.2 on the agenda, a livable region, um, is also a contract. 
Con 2020 1407, the provision of plumbing services. I'll hand over to Ms Weekle again. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. The contract before you, as, as you just mentioned, is for plumbing services. It is somewhat similar in structure in terms of the one that um, council has just considered for fire slashing, um, but obviously a very different content. So given um, the number of buildings that we have across the Shire, it's necessary for us to engage plumbers on a fairly regular basis to um, help us with the maintenance of our many buildings. We therefore um, seek the services of local plumbers to be engaged on for a three year period with the um, option of two, year, two 12 month extensions. So this provides us with a panel of contracts and again gives us that certainty because we have a schedule of rates. Given the extensive area that we cover, we're actually looking at um, breaking the contract into seven discrete areas and um, tenderers could tender for one area or all of those areas, that was really up to them. So again, we have got a confidential attachment to this report which goes through in some detail the tender process that we've been through. Um, I would say that it's very pleasing to see that we've had contractors from throughout the Shire um, submit their prices to us and we've been able to recommend um, local contractors as well as some that cover the entire area for all of these areas. So um, I also have Tom Weatherall who is online and hopefully not muted, um, who is our manager of assets and projects who can ask answer any technical questions that you may have. Um, but there is a recommendation, another lengthy recommendation before you um, that we're happy to take questions on. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Wiggle. Um, can you hear us there, Tom? It might be a difficulty. Are there any questions, councillors? Ms. Wiggle did a great job of answering the questions last time. We could ask her some questions again. <laughs> I see no questions. Okay, so there is a recommendation in front of you, councillors. Do I have a motion? Thank you, Councillor Allen. Do I have a seconder? Thank you, Councillor Crook. Would you like to speak to the motion, Councillor Allen? Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, I think the, the length of the uh, motion reflects the size of the shire and, and the amount of assets that we have to uh, maintain and uh, again I think that the uh, council officers have done a great job in being able to present this to us in this form. Thank you, thank you Councillor Allen and I think we are just getting the recommendation, the motion up on the screen now. Um, Councillor Crook would you like to speak to the motion? Oh, no thanks Madam Mayor. Thank you, is the motion opposed? Does anyone wish to speak for or against the motion? If not, I put the motion to the vote. All those in favour? Thank you, the motion is carried unanimously. Item 5.2.3 is another contract, uh, CON 2020 1406, the provision of electrical services. Ms Weigel, thank you. Thank you, Mayor. And again, somewhat similarly to the last contract that Council just considered, this is a contract for um, a panel of providers to provide a schedule of rates contract for electrical services um, across the Shire for electrical small minor works that are undertaken as part of the maintenance of our extensive building, um, buildings and assets. Um, again, we have broken the contract um, and the tender into seven discrete areas and contractors could, um, attenders could apply to either provide their services across the entire Shire or to one or two of those areas that they may see are closer to home. Again, we very pleasingly had a good response to this, um, to this tender and we've been able to recommend um, tenders for each of the areas and they, again, some of those cover more than one area and some are locals and close to home. And we again thank the local um, tenders and our local electricians for um, undertaking the work and putting together their, their submissions so that we can provide them with some surety of work going forward. And it also for a council it means that we can um, budget effectively because we know what their prices will be for the next three years. Like the last um, contracts, 
This is a three-year contract with two options to extend for a further 12 months. Thank you, Mayor. Happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Ms. Weigel. Councillors, are there any questions? Councillor White, thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Ms. Weigel, I was just uh, interested in um, when you spoke about what, what things they might repair. Um, would that may would these people maybe included if uh, council was to to add more um, solar energy panels to some of our buildings? Are they the people that would still get um, employed in that situation? They may not be installing the solar, but they would be there to make sure that it links in with our our systems and make um, and make sure that it's uh, com complementarily and compatibility, and there's no problems with it. They also undertake a range of other. Um, Small work, small upgrades, um, minor repairs, those sort of things. So really it's that minor works. If we had a large um, building um, we, that we were building, say when we did the bark extension, the electrical services were part of that particular contract rather than using the panel of contractors. So really it's when we're doing a new toilet block and we need to, um, to uh, extend that and put in lighting or, or any of those sort of things. So it's lots of small works and I notice we now have Mr Weatherall who can probably answer that better than I, I can but um, really it's those small pieces of work that um, add up over the year. Thank you. Thank you Ms Weagle. Was that question answered adequately Councillor White? No that's fine thank you. Terrific. Are there any further questions? We have Tom Weatherall on the line if there are any others. No I see no further questions. If not, uh, then uh, there is a recommendation in front of you, councillors. Do, you, do I have a motion? Thank you, Councillor Stowe. You'd like to move the recommendation? Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Buckley. Um, Councillor Stowe, the, so the motion is now up uh, on the board. Would you like to speak to the motion? Another straightforward motion. Have no hesitation in moving it. Thank you, Councillor Stowe. Councillor Buckley, would you like to speak to the motion? I have the utmost respect for Sparkies and I wish them well in their job. <laughs> Thank you. Does anyone oppose the motion? Does anybody else wish to speak, either for or against the motion? If not, I put the motion to the vote. All those in favour? Thank you. The motion is carried unanimously. Um, final um, contract, item 5.2.4 on the agenda, so CON 2020 0411, the Bullock Island Bridge replacement. Ms. Weigel, thank, thank you. Thank you, Mayor. And this time we move away from our panel of contracts and our schedule of rate time contracts into a construction contract. You would all know how important Bullock Island Bridge, it provides the only point of access to Bullock Island. It's important to our fishing industry, to um, accessing the Gippsland Ports boat yards and for um, visitors to the island for recreation and fishing and all those things. So it's a very important piece of um, equipment and an asset for council. Um, recently, recent inspections have identified that the, um, the, whilst the bridge might look okay, there's some structural issues and it is in need of replacement. We've therefore undertaken an extensive design um, to ensure that, that the, the bridge will complement the works that are going on in uh, Lakes Entrance more generally and to make sure that we have um, improved access for pedestrians and cyclists across the bridge as well. We, um, councillors may recall that there were some funding commitments made by um, the local federal member um, which included um, commitments to Bullock Island which cover this um, contract as well, which, so it would be fully funded. Um, you will note, however, that in the recommendations, recommendation four is one that we don't use particularly often, which is requiring us to um, confirm the, the project funding before we enter into a contract with, um, with the preferred contractor and the recommended contractor. This is just to ensure that we have our contract in place and the funding is secure. Um, before we actually enter contracts ourselves. So um, that's the reason for this slightly unusual recommendation for before you. I note we do have Mr Weatherall on the line um, who's been very um, closely involved with this contract all the way through. We also have a confidential um, 
tender evaluation panel report that you've been provided. So I'm sure that Mr. Weatherall can answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Weagle. You have a question, Councillor Buckley? Uh, Mr. Weatherall, my question is, could you just uh, explain a little bit further uh, about the structural issues that exist with the bridge and the importance of, um, of making sure that we replace it just so that uh, constituents are across why we're doing this and, um, and just to further inform the public? Thank you, uh, Councillor Buckley, uh, uh, sure. Um, the, the structural issues with this bridge are primarily in the in the steel reinforcing within the concrete. So um, within some of the structural components, the piles and the beams, um, particularly now, um, as uh, Miss Weagle has has identified, these these defects aren't immediately obvious for for users of the bridge, but they are um, quite compromising to the bridge's strength um, and its its capacity to carry um, particularly heavy heavy traffic and um, traffic that that's critical to to those stakeholders those commercial stakeholders on the island um, there have been some assessments in terms of the best long-term financial approach um, and on that basis replacement is, is considered the most cost effective um, cost-effective outcome and also provides that opportunity to to improve the the service that the bridge provides particularly through those walking and and cycling connections as well as its general amenity um, which will integrate very well with the um, the other works that are that are happening um, within close proximity both on the Esplanade and Bullock Island thank you yeah, thank you, Tom. And just finally, uh, the the um, demolition of the bridge that, as I understand it, will be recycled, correct? Correct. So the concrete components and the steel um, will be recycled, and it's generally um, almost exclusively the case with, with all of our construction work that that concrete is recycled. Thank you very much, Mr Weatherall. Um, Councillor Reeves, you had a question also? I do, Mayor. Thank you. My, my question relates to the section uh, resourcing and financial, uh, the funding of this particular project. Uh, just for clarification, councillors, the funding for this replacement of the bridge was subject to an announcement by the Australian Government. Uh, Council has uh, apportioned a funds uh, that are not el eligible for funding from the, the Federal Government. And I just note at this time, a funding agreement is yet to be finalised with the Australian Government. Do we have an update on that, um, Mr CEO or Mr Weatherall, on the funding arrangement? Is this going to go ahead? Uh, thank you, Councillor Reeves. Look, I can provide an update on that. Um, in terms of the committed funding, it's, it's important to note that the, the funding is committed um, by the Australian Government. There was a... a, a quite a comprehensive application process that was needed. Um, any issue associated with that is resolved. The application is with the Department of Infrastructure um, and we are really awaiting finalisation of a funding agreement per se, but we don't um, anticipate any uh, complications with that and certainly it is, it is our expectation um, that the project will go ahead and, and that, that issue will be resolved um, in the very near future. Uh, thanks, Mr. Weatherall, and that um, just highlights uh, point four in the recommendation, councillors. Thanks, Tom. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Reeves. If there are no further questions, councillors, there is a recommended recommendation in front of you. Do I have a motion? <laughs> ah, Councillor Allen. I was just yeah, yeah, yeah. drifting. <laughs> Terrific. I'm happy to second it and Thank get him you, across. Thank you, Councillor Reeves. <laughs> Councillor Allen, would you like to speak to the motion? Yes, well, uh, as uh, Tom said, this is a, a vital piece of infrastructure for the industries that are based on Bullock Island, but it's also uh, a major component of the transformation of Bullock Island uh, to utilise 
what at the moment is very underutilised space and this bridge will incorporate a, a dual bicycle pedestrian pathway on the Cunningham arm side and a pedestrian pathway on the north arm side and uh, it's a, a very, very important project for Lakes Entrance. Terrific. Thank you, Councillor Allen. Councillor Reeves. Is the motion opposed? Does anyone else wish to speak either for or against the motion? If not, I'll put the motion to the vote. All those in favour? Thank you. The motion is carried unanimously. Item 5.3 on the agenda, good governance. Um, it's the Audit and Risk Committee meeting of the 8th of December 2020 and I have Mr Costa to speak to this please. Thank you Mayor. Councillors, before you is the report titled Audit and Risk Committee meeting 8th of December 2020 which is advising councillors about the matters discussed at the Audit and Risk Committee meeting on the 8th of December. The salient points of the report for council to consider are the Audit and Risk Committee assists council in fulfilling its oversight and corporate governance responsibilities. Its primary function is to provide independent assurance and advice to council. The committee monitors the council's financial and performance, reporting risk management, fraud prevention systems, internal control framework, external and internal audit functions and policies and procedures. The committee assists of four independent members, one of whom is the chair, the mayor and two councillors. At the meeting on 8th of December 2020, the committee considered a range of reports across council business. The committee discussions focused on the preparations for the 2020-2021 bushfire season, including the Inspector General for Emergency Management's Phase 1 report of the 2019-20 bushfires. The next steps for council businesses and the operations with the easing of the COVID-19 restrictions. The committee was also presented with internal reports on the management of plant and equipment and statutory planning activities. Both reports identified opportunities for strengthening governance processes already in place. Adopting the actions in these reports enables Council to ensure good governance in management and decision making. I'm also here to answer any of your questions of a technical nature. The report is presented for your consideration. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mr Costa. Councillors, any questions of Mr Costa? Councillor Reeves. Thanks, Mayor. Councillors, um, I just note, Mr Costa, that, uh, that in the report that the uh, meeting, I know that we're only noting this report, but the, um, the meeting actually dealt with um, our bushfire recovery and COVID impacts on council business. Is there anything that we should be aware of that um, just might be of interest to council around the impacts of bushfire and COVID-19 on council business that the audit committee noted? In relation to bushfire, if I might, might respond, so the, the, um, the information that was provided to the audit committee identified um, the matters particularly that were coming out of the IGM report, the phase one report, and some of the matters in that that has implications for council um, in the short term and the longer term. So a number of those things are already in, in train, such as work that we're doing with communities to update local incident management plans and the like, and that's consistent with the IGEM uh, focus on the need for uh, emergency planning at the community level. Um, but it also identified some matters which are as yet um, not fully quantified, such as um, reforms proposed in relation to uh, management of fuel across all land tenures, including private land and, in, in, and road sides and the like. And so there are implications for that um, that we will need to understand as the state leads out those reforms. Thank you, Councillor Reeves. Any Further commentary question? around COVID-19 and the impacts on council operations? CEO. Thank Councillor Reeves. Thank you, Mayor. Um, the, so we've presented um, to the Audit Committee on a number of occasions in relation to uh, COVID-19 impacts. 
the, um, the audit committee have uh, endorsed the East Gippsland way we do business now uh, plan and have noted the, um, that, that that plan is reviewed on a regular basis. There's, there's certainly no doubt that uh, COVID-19 has had a significant impact um, on our staff and, and the way that we do business now and will have um, an impact on the way we do business into the future. So we will continue to bring that information back um, to, to both that committee and, and to this council to keep you updated. Well, thanks, thanks so much for that, Mayor and CEO. And just um, whether it's a word of advice or warning, or just look after your staff, won't you? It's uh, it's been a difficult year. Yes. Uh, if I may, Mayor, thank um, you. Thank you. Um, it's certainly been at the top of the agenda of the executive team in t uh, about looking after uh, the staff welfare, both uh, with the the impact of the bushfire, which in itself is a, a major contributor to stress for, for our staff, as well as then COVID on top of that. We've, we've implemented a number of um, EAP um, counselling, but also looking at not just the individual support, but also looking at how do we celebrate the things that have been achieved as an organisation, because often in these difficult times, you're in the business, you're in the you're right down and you, you're getting on with stuff. Um, we've made sure that we've also recognised the work that people have done, the innovation, the agility to change at a, at a drop of a hat, and certainly the COVID, um, the, the COVID environment and the changes to the directions from the Chief Health Officer meant that we had to often um, open services, close services, adjust services, uh, and staff took that in their stride. So um, they've done an amazing job this year, and we've certainly wanted to celebrate what they've done, but also provide those support mechanisms to make sure we're here and everyone is here next year to continue to work with our community. I think, Mayor, it's just worth noting that it is worth celebrating and acknowledging the good work of the CEO and the team and the staff. Uh, this, this report doesn't do justice to the business continuity, the social continuity and the economic continuity that the council have maintained through this very difficult year, the year that most of us are happy to see in the rear vision mirror, I think. Thank you, Councillor Roos. They're very important points and thank you for your response. Councillor Buckley. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, this, is, this is just more of a, a, I guess, an open question. Um, I observed the, the committee meeting and um, it was raised by one of, uh, one of the committee members um, the practice of being able to peruse the draft budget um, so that they could be able to, you know, obviously part of their job is risk management. So uh, maybe this is for, for Mr Costa. Is that a, um, it, it, it's a practice that is adopted by other shires. Is that something that, um, that moving forward will be able to be looked at for this committee to gain that type of access for transparency? It is something that other, some other councils apparently do, but it's something that other councils also don't do. And I would specify that one of the key aspects of a councillor's role is to adopt the budget under the Act. And then one of the key aspects of the Audit and Risk Committee is to make sure that everything is acting in accordance with the adopted budget after the fact. So as we said in the Audit and Risk Committee, and I'll refer to the CEO, um, it is something that we can look into and bring back potential options, but it is not just a straight, that's what everybody else does. Uh, thank you, Mr Costa. So that, that means that it will, it, it will come back to the councillors for us to have some robust debate about, is that correct? Um, through you, Mayor. Uh, Councillor Buckley, so what we agreed to do was take the, take the query on notice um, okay. so that we could get the information. Um, and then we would be taking that back to the Audit and Risk Committee who asked the question um, for, um, for their consideration and determination of, um, of the, I guess, of the outcome of that work. Um, certainly happy to bring it to council laws or the council chamber. Um, and as uh, Mr Costa said, um, there's certainly a number of ways which uh, this can be done and we would look to make sure that we're providing the best possible opportunity to get the best possible budget outcome. Greatly um, appreciate that transparency and look forward to the, that conversation. Thank you. Thank you, councillors. If there are no further questions, we have a recommendation. 
Do I have a motion? And I think we might read this one because it's quite short. If somebody would like to move the motion. Sure. Thank you, Councillor Reeves. Is there a seconder, please? Thank you, Councillor Allen. Would you like to speak to the motion, Councillor oh, Reeves? I think everything that needed to be said has been said in the discussion, uh, Mayor, so thank you and thank you to the officers. Okay. Could you just read the motion, please? Sorry, uh, Mayor. Okay, sure. So I um, move that Council receives and notes this report on items considered by East Gippsland Shire Council Audit and Risk Committee at its meeting held on 8th of December 2020. Thank you. Councillor Allen, do you wish to speak to the motion? No, no, I think it's pretty, pretty self-explanatory. Yeah. Is the motion opposed? No. Does anyone else wish to speak either for or against the motion? If not, I put the motion to the vote. All those in favour? Thank you. The motion is carried unanimously. Item 5.3.2, um, is the instrument of appointment and authorisation. Ms. De Costa, please. Thank you, Mayor. Councillors, before you is a report titled Instrument of Appointment and Authorisation, which is seeking council to appoint council staff as authorised officers under the Planning and Environment Act 1987. The salient points of the report for council to consider are, this is an administrative process to enable specifically appointed council officers to act on behalf of council when implementing the Planning and Environment Act. Under the Planning and Environment Act, Council must directly appoint an authorised officer to carry out their statutory <laughs> obligations. The appointment and authorisation allows the Council officers to act on Council's behalf in any proceedings that might arise in implementing the Act. For example, an authorised officer under the Planning and Environment Act has the power to direct works to cease or commence or to enter a property to determine compliance with the Act or issue planning permits. In addition, the appointed council officers may represent council in planning matters before the Victorian Civil and Administrative Tribunal. This report is presented to enable a recently appointed statutory land use planning officer, Bushfield Re Bushfire Rebuild, to perform their role. As the current instrument covers all council officers authorised under the Planning and Environment Act 1987, all officers currently appointed are also being reappointed. Thank you, Mr. Costa. Councillors, are there any questions? Councillor Reeves. Yep, sorry to do this, Councillors, but the question is, Mr. Costa, just uh, it's probably a perennial question uh, around these delegations that uh, why we have to have the individuals named and why their um, roles can't be just rolled over regularly. So the Act requires that we specifically name the individuals for this specific purpose, so that is why they are before you. Thank you, Councillor Reeves. Any further questions, Councillors? No? If not, there's a recommendation in front of you. Do I have a motion, please? Thank you, Councillor Greeson. Is there a seconder? Thank you, Councillor Crook. Would you like to speak to the motion, Councillor Greeson? Uh, no, I think it's been explained adequately. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Crook, do you wish to speak to the motion? Uh, no, thank you, Madam Mayor. Is the motion opposed? Does anyone else wish to speak either for or against the motion? If not, I put the motion to the vote. All those in favour? Thank you. The mo motion is carried unanimously. Item 5.3.3, the service provisions and fire danger ratings policy. Thank you, Ms. De Costa. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, councillors, as the Mayor has mentioned, this report is the Service Provision and Fire Danger Ratings Policy, which is seeking adoption as outlined in Attachment 1. The salient points of the report for Council to consider are the Service Provision and Fire Danger Ratings Policy outlines changes to Council's service provision to the community on days predicted to pose the highest fire danger risk to the public. The policy will apply on code red days and or state government declared state of disaster. The report and subsequent policy outlines when Council may operate with altered or reduced service levels on code red days or state government declared state of disaster in order to ensure Council's operations do not unintentionally cause a fire, to provide for the safety of Council staff and to ensure that the public is not placed in situations of undue risk, and to ensure sufficient staff resources can be redeployed to emergency response functions as required. The policy also addresses Council's responsibility to plan and manage for the provision of services and Council information on days with the highest fire danger risk in order to maximise employee and community safety. 
I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Costa. Councillors, question, Councillor Reeves. Uh, thanks, Mayor. Thanks, Mr. Costa. This, um, this is the first time I've seen this policy in my eight or nine years, so this is obviously a new policy, I gather. Has it been triggered by the Local Government Act 2020 or other legislation? No, no, it hasn't. What it's been is on the back of having something in place in order to manage what we've seen take place and instead of being reactive, having a process in place that officers can enact as soon as possible. Um, so basically a procedure that provides in very stressful situations a step-by-step -step so that we can get on top of things as fast as possible. And if I may, Mayor, um, so as a new policy, we've referenced this against best industry practice and there are perhaps other shires who have something similar that we've been able to benchmark against or has this been started from the very beginning? Um, this, uh, this policy that commenced its drafting ahead of the, the last season's bushfires, so it's been in train for a little while and it was benchmarked against um, a policy in place for another council that's in a similarly uh, fire prone situation where it's about having clarity of guidance for officers so that they can move quickly in, in the event of high fire risk days and also so the community are aware of what to expect. Thank you, Mr. So if I may, Councilor Mayor, this, um, yes. this, this, this is a, a really important policy um, mm. and uh, we're not the only council that is uh, at risk and I just wonder if, if there's any provision or any way that we can actually prosecute this through MAV and have it as a, as a much more ubiquitous and statewide, I, I think it's really important. Um, and if we're doing and leading the way, we should do and lead the way. Hmm. Thank you. Mr CEO, would, would, do you wish to comment? No comment. Thank you. Thank you. That's, um, that's a good suggestion. Councillors, are there any other questions of clarification? If not, there is a recommendation here. Do I have a motion? Thank you, Councillor Buckley. Um, and do I have a seconder? Thank you, Councillor Cook. Do you wish to speak to the motion, Councillor Buckley? Um, just to say after the, the last season that we had, um, it, it, it's comforting to know that there is something in place uh, for future generations to feel safer in regards to how they interact with with um, council and how we can provide better service. So I thank the people responsible who have put this policy together and, and I look forward to even further improvements as we move forward. Thank you. Councillor Crook, do you wish to speak to the motion? Oh, just briefly, just to second what uh, Sonia's Councillor Buckley is saying there. Um, and also just to reiterate that this is obviously in response to increasing fire severity and frequency as a result of um, climate change and global warming. Um, and I, I welcome its, its development and our implementation of it. Um, in regards to Councillor Reeve's suggestion, that's, that's also welcomed, although I, I guess it's probably fair to say that these things do need to be implemented on a, uh, on a basis that takes those local characteristics into account, so we'd need to provide for those at a, at a council level. Thank you, Councillor Crook. Um, is the motion opposed? Would anyone else like to speak for or against the motion? Councillor Greeson? Um, I just wish to ask a question. Is that out of line or should I wait until I, it is out of line? Wait oh, I well, um, I, is it a question so of clarification about yes, the... Yes. Uh, I think I'll allow that question. <laughs> uh, thank you. Um, I just wanted to ask Stuart... Um, McConnell, you, did you just say that this was pulled together before the bushfires that occurred this year? And if so, um, does it need any review and given the learnings since then? Thank you, Councillor Gretchen, and through you, you Mayor. Um, the, the work on the policy commenced, I think, in November before the fires. So it was only just before the, the fire season kicked off. And so most of the development has occurred in the context of the learnings from last season. And so I think it's quite appropriate in that context. Thank you, Councillor Greeson. Um, does anyone else wish to speak for or against the motion? Councillor Reeves. 
I think, um, Mayor, one of the important matters around this is I think that in future this may encompass more emergency response, not just bushfire. So there's a scope for that. That's just a comment. One of the, th the other things that I think this does is uh, will have an indirect positive effect on organisational health and culture. Because what it actually does, one of the key indicators of organisational health is role clarity. And I think when you read the policy, it actually provides some really clear limits of expectations on staff and services. And rather than guessing that, or th people, our staff, thinking they have to work beyond what's reasonable, it actually provides some really clear limits on where their expectation is finished. So I'm hoping that this will in future as well have a positive effect on role clarity as an organisational health outcome. So it's a really important document. Thank you. I'll take that as comments in support of the motion. Anybody else wish to speak, either for or against? No, I'll put the motion to the vote. All those in favour? Thank you. The motion is carried unanimously. Item 5.3.4 is the amendment land, uh, council leasing and licensing policy for council owned land and council managed land. Mr Costa, thank you. Thank you, Mayor. The salient points of the report in front of you for Council to consider are at the Council meeting held on the 15th of September 2020, a notice of motion was carried to amend Section 2, Expression of Interest of the Leasing and Licensing Policy, to provide an opportunity for councillors to discuss, debate, assess and decide on whether Council will pursue a competitive expression of interest process prior to the expiry of partly commercial leases. The rationale contained in the originating notice of motion stated that the requested amendment will align with best practice principles as outlined in the state government's leasing policy for Victorian Crown land. If the amendment is adopted, it will apply to all partly commercial leases and licences. Officers have made the amendment to the leasing and licensing policy as attached and provided at attachment one in accordance with council's resolution. However, officers have identified that a full review of the leasing and licensing policy is due to be implemented by July 2021 and we will be brought back to Council for consideration in accordance with the new Local Government Act 2020. Thank Happy you, Mr Costa. Questions. Councillors, are there any questions? <coughs> Councillor White. Thank you. I was just reading in the in the recommendation, and I just wanted some clarity around um, a word where it says council. Uh, this is um, in the second paragraph. Um, so it's saying through a formal resolution, council can exempt the proposed lease or lease license. Is that as council as the CEO, or is that as council as councillors? Uh, through the mayor, that's councillors. For partly commercial, yes. Yeah, so I just wanted some clarity because it, it yeah, whether it, it, so it definitely does mean <coughs> that. Councillors. Yep, no ambi ambiguity. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor White. Any further questions, Councillors? If not, there is a recommendation in front of you. Do I have a motion? Thank you, Councillor White. Do I have a seconder? Thank you, Councillor Rees. Do you wish to speak to the motion, Councillor White? Uh, thank you, Mayor. Look, this is um, this is something that was um, began in the at the end of the last council term, and uh, it's it obviously had to come before this council. And uh, we, it, it, it's it's just hoping, and of course there will be a another review in about six months' time, which will come before council, but. Uh, this is um, just something that uh, there, were, there, there appeared to be a lot of ambiguities around um, end of lease. Um, we got some bad press, in fact, uh, to do with one of, one of the uh, expiring leases and uh, this was brought by Councillor Peltz and uh, as I said in the last council and um, it, it's just to try and get some, some clarity around how leases will be, will, uh, run their course or perhaps expire. Obviously, um, at times there may be a, a lease agreement where the, um, where the fees aren't paid. So that becomes a different issue and, uh, you know, the, the lease could expire just through lack of payment of fees. But uh, this is just um, as, as a group at that time and hopefully uh, in, in this instance that, um, that bec 
because uh, the councillors have a social licence in a lot of these issues versus the officers which have a business to run, um, we just felt that uh, you know we could we could put our stamp on some of these things with using social licence rather than purely monetary uh, issues. Um, and of, of course, no offence to the officers because uh, they do a great job. But uh, this was just something we felt as a group of councillors with social licence um, because some of these leases are, um, are very, very, be very beneficial to the community in terms of what some of these licences produce and it is actual volunteerism and community, um, investment in community and, and putting the funds that they raise back into community which I think is very important to, uh, to note that that's how many of these leases operated. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor White. Councillor Reeves, you wish to speak to the motion? Yep. Thanks, Mayor. <clears throat> Councillors, um, the recommendation honours the request of the last council. Talk about just in time, because uh, today is the 15th of December, and the request was to bring a report to council within three months. Uh, it's three months to the minute not just to the day. So well done, CEO, and your officers for doing that and honouring the request of the last council and delivering a, an amendment, but, but also raising uh, our attention to the fact that the Local Government Act does require us to, to review this um, before July next year. So we look forward to that as well. Thank you, Councillor Rees. Um, is the motion opposed? Does anyone else wish to speak for or against the motion? Uh, yes, Councillor Buckley. I'd like to speak for the for the motion. I think um, it, a lot has been said, but I think community are looking upon us as councillors to represent them and use our social licence to make sure that we support them in their endeavours. And I just want to um, th pay uh, my respects and thanks to the previous council for for allowing us this opportunity to follow through on their good work. Thank you. Um, does anyone else wish to speak for or against the motion? If not, I put the motion to the vote. All those in favour? Thank you. The motion is carried unanimously. Um, item six on the agenda is urgent and other business, and we don't have any of that. So then we move on um, to item seven. Uh, councillors, we now have a confidential item to discuss at item 7.5. Um, so may I ask councillors to move that the meeting be closed pursuant of section 665 of the Local Government Act 2020 to consider confidential information as defined in section 31 of the Act as being information that contains private commercial information which if released would, be, would unreasonably expose the business businesses, com uh, commercial or financial undertaking to disadvantage. Thank you, Councillor Stowe. Do I have a seconder? Thank you, Councillor Allen. Um, is the motion opposed? If not, I put the motion to the vote. All those in favour? Thank you, the motion is carried. Council will now close the meeting to the public as resolved to consider confidential information.
So uh, council resolved in closed meeting to resolve the recommendation as shown on the screen, I think. No? Sorry. Uh, through you, Mayor. No, mm. this, uh, the, the matter that was resolved in, comp in, in the closed session uh, is required to stay in the closed session. Oh. Um, so that uh, we do not need a motion to, to move that out at all. So I apologise if there was any confusion there. Um, the uh, meeting agenda is, is, is over. Yes. Happy for you to close the meeting as required. <laughs> Fantastic. Right. I will formally close the meeting then. Councillors, thank you very much for your attention. Mr CEO and staff, thank you very much for all your help. And this is the last meeting of this year, so good wishes everybody. I hope everybody has a rest and we have a quiet summer and we'll look forward to being back with you early in the new year. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Merry Christmas. Good on you. Thanks CEO, Mayor and officers for your